over the next eight weeks, the local high school teams will be playing their seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. As the home of the Prep Pigskin Report, we'll have highlights for you every single weekend, starting with eight games today. Madison High School hosting the seven-on-seven, -seven where the Warhawks take on the Vaqueros. The Wickhaus are looking everywhere for a receiver and finds Jack St. Nice grab there for the touchdown. The Warhawks have Keenan Kirsten. The man with five Division One offers, including USC, he's pretty darn good. The Kiros respond. Donnie Green gets the catch and runs down the middle for a touchdown, but the Warhawks pull away late. Tyson, a gangstad, has an open in the end zone and right in front of him as the Warhawks win 34-22. Seven on seven is fun because it gets, a, gets you a chance to show your athleticism and what you can do uh, without the pads on. It's more competitive, like more talking competitive-wise out here in seven on seven. All right, Mustangs playing host to the Barons in the spring football matchup. Uh, Barons ball, that's Kevin Rosar finding Jonathan Santos for the score in the lead. And then it's Rosar again. This time he finds Ramon Taronis for a touchdown. Taronis, uh, not done though. He comes back with an interception on defense. It's second on the day. Then Rosar one more time to Davian Lanier. Check out the celebration after this one. Yeah, as the Barons go on to win. 32, you're about to say two, two. I mean, it was a collective effort overall. I can't I can't give thanks to one person or put, put it all on one person. It's all a team effort. We've been working hard for this, and it's the bounce back. <laughs> it's the beginning of a bounce back from last year. We can't let this uh, get too high. We can't, we can't get our highs get too high or lows get too low. We got to stay mellow, stay humble, and keep going. There's no hitting in seven on seven. This time out of Madison, it's the Wildcats and the Eagles. Wildcats score two points on the interception at the goal line by, <coughs> by Matthew Rabbit. And it's Wildcats again. This is Brock Mamber to Isaac Guzman, who makes the one-handed touchdown catch. The Eagles would get on the board. Jacob Sedberg catching a touchdown from Chris Ostring. That would make it 15 to six. And then it's Mamber with one of his two touchdown passes to Jordan Wilkins in the back of the end zone. Nice grab as Wildcats win it 30 to 14. I'm feeling really good with the chemistry. It's been a long time since I've thrown to some of these guys, but it's freshman year to my senior year. I've been throwing with them countless times at practice, and it just it flows. It feels like you're back to a freshman game. Up next is the Vikings taking on the Cavers. This is uh, Vikings with the ball quarterback. Uh, Karsten Phelan finds Gabe Solis for the touchdown, one of two touchdowns on the day for them as they take the early lead. Then here's Cavers quarterback Quinn O'Connor, who finds Jaden. A wick wear, a lefty. There, nice grab. As that's a touchdown. Then O'Connor again. This time to Jaden uh, Colon on the touchdown. Cavers would take the lead in the final minutes. The Vikings needing to stop. O'Connor's pass is tipped into the air, and Esteban Adarias catches it for the touchdown. Cavers win it 21 to 12. I think for the encore, we just got to go and finish it off. Um, no, we got there. It didn't go the way we wanted it to, but um, we're going to take it game by game this year just to get back to where we were. I'm going to say uh, nobody believed in us from the start, and we did it. And I think I knew it wasn't a fluke, and we'll be back this year, and we're going to finish it off. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. All right, Marauders uh, taking on the Cougars in this spring football matchup. Hey, there's their new head coach. Marauders open the scores. It's Noah Tumbling connecting with... Artyom Har in the corner of the end zone, seven nothing. Cougars Jeremy uh, Gal with a 30-yard touchdown to freshman West Neely, seven six Marauders, and it's Gal throwing a 40-yard touchdown to Matthew McGrain. Makes it 13 to seven. Cougars West Neely would be able to knock down this potential touchdown pass by the Marauders as uh, Cougars win it 22 to 13. We feel great. We're coming in with a new team. We lost most of our seniors. We're out here just getting the work, and it felt great to win the first game. It feels great to be the leader of the team. I'm ready to fill in the shoes that um, from last year. Next up, the Knights and the Hornets, two teams that love to air it out. The Hornets, Chris Davalo finding Keyshawn Smith right in your living room. Knights respond. Miles Hastings sends a, a liner to Gavin Shervaney. I promise I'll get your name right this year, Gavin. I butchered a couple times last year. And so uh, he runs it in. And it's Traquan Catlin wide open to keep the Hornets in the lead. But after the Knights score with no time left, Shervini scores a game-winning two-point conversion, 21-20. Knights. 
Uh, it definitely allows you to work on uh, your craft and your skill set and playing as that team, getting that extra team chemistry. Um, it's without the um, physicality, so it kind of teaches you the skill level you need to participate at that varsity level. All right, how about the Q-Dogs and the Bulldogs? I guess they call that a dog fight. The Bulldogs, Dawson, San Filippo with the interception. Those are good for two and seven on seven. The Q-Dogs, Tim Zembrowski to Dustin Ellison, who appears to score, but it's ruled down at the five-yard line. Two plays later, San Filippo tips the pass, and teammate Leo Sainez intercepts for the Bulldogs. Late in the game, it's the Q-Dogs, Mark... Uh, Jinovich making the leaping interception in the end zone to deny a score. The Bulldogs win it on interceptions, 8-4. Um, it went good. We got four picks. Um, we have a lot of young guys playing right now because uh, we're missing guys from do the baseball and basketball. But it's good reps for these younger guys. All right, Saints interim head coach Joe Kramer leading his team against the Chieftains. The Saints, Will Cavanaugh would find Armando Arala for the 27-yard touchdown as they would take the lead. The Chieftains come back with Ryan Christian to Caleb Orozco for a 40-yard score. That's a nice ball there. Yep, sure is. And later it's Kavanaugh to Arala again for 28 yards as the Saints would retake the lead. Then with under six minutes to play, it's Christian passing to Donald Fitzgerald who makes a catch in traffic for the game winner. Chieftains 21-19 winners. All right. He said it was great to win. Uh, it's the final night of the Battle of the Fans. Voting will start officially tonight. Our final entry comes from reigning champion Mel Carmel, where Allison Edmonds enters the Red Sea. Here at the defending Battle of the Fans, champion Mel Carmel. Now, some people think the Red Sea has lost their flow, but I'm right here in the middle of it and can tell you that they are as strong as ever. <laughs> Again, voting starts tonight. Those are all the social media places you can vote. KUSI, PPR, and KUSI Sports on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. What a great...